Добрый день, уважаемые. Good afternoon, dear colleagues and guests. Today is the 21st of April 2021, 3 p.m. Moscow time. Let me declare open a session of the Dissertation Council. Let me declare open a session of the Dissertation Council for the defense of thesis by uh, Ivanova Eugenia Vladimirovna for the degree of candidate of law, academic specialty 120008, criminal law and criminology, criminal enforcement law on the theme, kidnapping, qualification, responsibility. Let me call a technical break. Oh. We are okay now. Let me call a technical break number one. Technical break number one is over. Let's continue this session of our dissertation council by the order of Academic Secretary of St. Petersburg University of the 12th of February 2021, number 1118 slash 1. I, Viklinka Vasilova Dimitri, Doctor of Law, Professor, Professor of the Criminal Law Department of St. Petersburg University was appointed chairman of this dissertation council. Other members of the dissertation council were appointed with the same order. Let me introduce them to Milukov, Sergei Fyodorovich, Doctor of Law, Professor, Professor of the Criminal Law Department of a Russian State Pedagogical University named after Herzen, Bavsun Maxim Viktorovich, Doctor of Law, Professor. Deputy Head of the University for Scientific Works in Petersburg University of the Ministry of Internal Affairs of the Russian Federation. In the remote access law, uh, mode, we have Pekorov Nikolai Ivanovich, Doctor of Law, Professor, Professor of the Department of Criminal Law Disciplines of Prosecutors University of the Russian Federation. Nikolai Ivanovich, can you see? We can't hear you. Uh, I switched off the sound. I can see and hear you very well. Thank you. Safar Zadeh Anwar Islam, Doctor of Law, Associate Professor, Head of the Department of Criminal Law and Anti-Corruption, Tajik National University, Tajikistan. Anwar Islam, can you see and hear us? Yes. Thank you. The degree applicant is also present, Ivanova Eugenia Vladimirovna, also the academic advisor, Shiplika Vladislav Fedorovich, Doctor of Law, Professor, Professor of the Criminal Law Department of St. Petersburg University is present. To improve the quality of communication, dear colleagues working in the remote access mode, please switch off your microphones, but please remember to switch them on when you're given the floor. Let me also inform you that our session is being broadcast online and uh, at the Petersburg University website. The speeches are being translated simultaneously from Russian into English or from English into Russian. During the live broadcast of the Dissertation Council session, at the moment, an email is displayed to which during our session, all the listeners may send their opinions and questions to the degree applicant online. 
regarding the content of a thesis and the ongoing scientific discussion. And thus, take part in the discussion. These questions shall be forwarded to me by our technical support department and I shall present them during the discussion part. Questions should be related strictly to the applicant's speech and the content of her thesis. And it's also necessary to indicate full name, position and place of employment of the author of the question. Questions that are not related to the scientific discussion, the text and assessment of the thesis itself and unsigned questions should not be presented. In accordance with the order of awarding academic degrees at St. Petersburg Universities, degree of candidate of science and doctor of science approved by the local regulations of St. Petersburg University, a session of the dissertation council shall be considered competent if at least if at least two thirds of the approved members are present, but not less than four persons. Our council consists of five members, all five are present, including two council members in the remote interactive mode. Audiovisual contact has been established with them, thus I state we have the quorum. Let me set forth the following procedure of today's session with approximate duration of two hours. First, summary information of the chairman about the degree applicant and documents submitted by the degree applicant and their compliance with applicable regulations answers to possible questions approximately five minutes. Summary report of the chairman of the uh, degree applicant outlining the key points of her thesis. Approximately 15 minutes questions to the degree applicant, not more than two minutes per each question. Answers of the applicant, not more than five minutes. Uh, pictures of all the dissertation council members in turn with their assessment of the thesis and speech of the uh, applicant. Approximately 10 minutes for each speaker. Uh, chairman as speech and his assessment of the thesis, 10 minutes, answers of the degree applicant to questions and comments made by the council members up to 20 minutes, open discussion and speeches of the attendees with summaries of their opinions and specific suggestions to the applicant strictly on the theme of the study, not more than two minutes for each speaker. At that, all the speakers are kindly requested to register themselves in the registration sheet and introduce themselves fully before speaking. Next, the chairman shall present questions sent during the discussion. While the session has been broadcast online at the university website, let me uh, draw your attention that written questions uh, reading of which should take more than two minutes should not be presented. Answers of the uh, of the applicant, speech of the academic advisor, up to three minutes. Discussion by the council members before uh, open voting. For this period, the sound shall be muted, up to five minutes, and open individual voting and counting the votes by the chairman. The results shall be recorded in the minutes of the meeting. Making decision on awarding or non-awarding the degree and final uh, closing remarks of the applicant, no more than two minutes. Dear colleagues, do you have any objections to this procedure? No, we have no, no, we have no questions. Thank you. If no one objects, let's start the procedure. Uh, please switch over your mobile phones. Uh, and dear council members, dear colleagues, and uh, council members working in the remote access mode, please uh, keep your telephones on. Uh, so that we could reach you in case of emergency. The thesis of uh, Ivanova Eugenia Valiev, the degree of a candidate of law, 
academic specialty uh, 12008 criminal law and criminology uh, uh, a criminal enforcement law on the theme kidnapping qualification and responsibility was accepted for defense by the order of the academic secretary of St. Petersburg University Alexander Vladimir Nyodov on the 27th of January 2021 number 648-1 Ivanova Gina Vladimir wrote her thesis at St. Petersburg University her academic advisor is Doctor of Law Professor, Professor of the Department of Criminal Law of St. Petersburg University, Shepelkov Vladislav Fyodorovich. The number of publications which set forth the main scientific results of the, of the thesis, according to the closed list, is four papers in peer-reviewed public journals from the list approved by the Ministry of Science and Education of Russian Federation four publications in journals indexed in the scientometric databases, Women's Science and Scopus, no publications. The degree applicant submitted to the Academic Secretary of St. Petersburg University a full set of documents to accept her thesis for consideration and defense. All the documents comply with Article 12 of Section 3 of the order. All the documents submitted by the applicant according to the information I received from the curator comply with the requirements and are kept in the attestation file of the applicant. Copies are available from the Dissertation Council Civility Support Department officer who is present at, the, at this session. Before I give the floor to the applicant, I have a question for the Dissertation Council members. Do you Dear council members, have any general questions to the applicant and is it necessary to review the entire list of documents submitted by the applicant? Please? No, we don't have any questions. Thank you. Nikola Ivanovich? Dear colleagues? No, we don't. Thank you. Let me remind you, uh, the applicant shall have about 15 minutes for a summary presentation of her research. Thank you. Dear chairman, dear council members, dear guests, let me uh, introduce to you uh, my thesis called Kidnapping, Qualification and Responsibility. The relevance of the topic is conditioned by the following circumstances. Firstly, the number of kidnappings registered in the Russian Federation, on the one hand, is significant, and on the other hand, there's practically no trend to reduce the number of these dangerous crimes. Thus, in 2014, according to the statistics of the Ministry of Internal Affairs, there were 369 kidnappings, and in 2019, 351. Second, in the doctrine of criminal law, many questions of responsibility for kidnapping and its qualifications are debatable. Thirdly, the judicial practice of applying the corpus of Article 26 it cannot, cannot be called stable for a long time preceding the adoption of the resolution of the Supreme Court on judicial practice in cases of kidnapping, illegal imprisonment, and human trafficking there was a fair amount of controversy in the judicial practice concerning the understanding of the content of the uh, aspect of kidnapping and the moment of end of this crime. Since the enactment of this resolution, the problems have not been fully resolved. And uh, a significant and uh, contains no explanations of certain problematic issues. At the, the same time, in application of Article 26, a significant number of problems arise. The first is the definition of the object of kidnapping and ensuing difficulty in qualifying the office under Article 26 of the Criminal Law Code, given the uh, specific status and debatable issues in the prospect of criminal liability for those who carry out the unlawful removal of a child who is related to them. The second is the problem of the set of acts included in the objective side of kidnapping. Traditionally, this includes three acts capture, removal, and retention of the victim. However, only displacement is a mandatory act included in the objective side of kidnapping. The third problem is related to the fact that the law in differentiating criminal responsibility does not take into account a number of factors that increase the social danger of kidnapping. The fourth problem is the ambiguity of interpretation 
of the grounds for exemption from criminal liability under the note to Article 126 of the Criminal Code. The resolution of the plenum of the Supreme Court of Russian Federation on judicial practice in cases of human addiction, illegal depression, liberty does not provide def- uh, re- explanations regarding the application. There is no clear understanding of what is met of in relation to the note. In judicial practice, there is no uniform understanding of the voluntary release of the kidnapped person. The analysis shows that the note can also be applied in a situation where there are serious consequences, even the death of the victim. A separate problem is the differentiation of kidnapping from other crimes related as well as cumulative qualification with other crimes. In order to receive, resolve these and other problems, the following tasks were solved. First of all, researching the history of development of Russian norms on liability for kidnapping. Second, the study of foreign laws on liability for kidnapping. Analysis of the basic constituted elements of kidnapping, considering the problems of constructing the applying, qualified, and specially elements of kidnapping, notes to Article 26 of the Criminal Code, differentiation of kidnapping from other offenses related. The aim of the research is to develop a model of criminal law protection of personal liberty from kidnapping. According to the results of the work, the following main conclusions are made. First conclusion is, historical analysis of Russian legislation leads to the conclusion that initially the norm of criminal responsibility for kidnapping appeared as protecting marriage and the family relations and the property relations. Personal physical freedom, freedom became the main object at the beginning of the 18th century with connection of adoption of military articles in 1715. Second, a study of foreign legislation in 26 countries showed that in foreign countries a nondescript disposition of the norm of responsibility for kidnapping prevails. No norms of criminal responsibility for kidnapping were identified that could be accepted by the Russian lawmakers. Third conclusion, the object of kidnapping is the social relations which ensure the disposal by a person of his physical freedom. The physical freedom is the right of an individual to determine his or her whereabouts at his or her own discretion will. A number of subjects by virtue of the law deprived of the opportunity to exercise the right to physical freedom directly. In particular, these are young children and underage children exercise this right indirectly through their parents and legal representatives. Fourth conclusion, the current wording of Article 126 of the Criminal Code does not fully comply with the constitutional principle of formal definiteness, since it leads to the possibility of arbitrary determination of the objective and subjective grounds for kidnapping. In this connection, it suggested that kidnapping should be understood as capture and removal of a person carried out against the will of the victim. Fifth conclusion, made by me, the circumstances already envisaged in the law, the, alone with those already envisaged, I believe that these uh, circumstances should include a prolonged captivity as well as removal of the kidnapped person outside the Russian Federation. These circumstances should be provided for as qualifying circumstances. Six is a application of a note uh, to Article 126. In literal interpretation infringes the rights of the victim since it implies unconditional release of the perpetrator from the criminal regardless of the harm caused to the victim. The wording of the note should be amended so that the release from criminal responsibility would be possible only in cases where the crime committed did not cause significant harm to the victim and the victim was released within a reasonable time after kidnapping. In other cases, the release of the kidnapped person should be considered as a circumstance-mitigating punishment. A seventh conclusion is on the need to introduce responsibility for persons uh, kidnapping children who are related. The arbitrary seizure of a child and his removal from place of permanent temporary residence committed against the will of the person with whom the place of the residence is determined by a person deprived of parental rights in relation to, as well as by his grandfather, grandmother, brother or sister of the child has public danger and should be prosecuted under the criminal law. 
Meanwhile, this act should be considered as having less public danger compared to the crime under Part 1 of Article 126 of the Criminal Code and definitely Part 2 of the, of the article. The eighth conclusion uh, is that in cases when a person commits a crime, the direct object of which is not in social relations, that ensure the physical freedom of the victim, there's also an attack of the main object of Article 126. And the deed is, should, is subject to allocation under cumulative offenses. An exception are cases of committed crimes provided by Articles 126, 206, 200, uh, 301 of the Criminal Code. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. The uh, Council members, do you have questions? Uh, regarding the presentation of the applicant. I have a question, please. Here's my question. Thank you for such a uh, comprehensive and brief report, Eugenia Vladimirovna. Could you please explain uh, this note, one that you suggest to, in to include in the criminal law? The note that would define to the lawmakers the concepts they are using here. Here I'm speaking. I'm, well, you say here that it could be released. The, if he released the victim uh, within reasonable limits after kidnapping. So. Uh, uh, put yourself in the shoes of lawmakers who uh, so what is this reasonable time limit could you explain this thank you for this question Sergei Fyodorovich I understand that this is a serious problem we may see many papers and uh, theses where this uh, time period is limited to one, uh, 24 hours a week. Uh, and I think that setting a time period doesn't make sense. Uh, the norm is in caters for the victim's interests. And let's imagine a situation where the victim was kidnapped and uh, the perpetrator obtained everything they wanted and they have a dilemma what to do with the victim. So first option is to release if there is no norm. And, uh, so this will still uh, be a reason for a, a, a client criminal law. And second is the uh, to keep the uh, victim in prison. Uh, but and for that and and then the third option is to kill the victim. Uh, so they could not report on them. So I think that uh, setting a time limit. Uh, is in the interests of the victims, because if this time period, when time period expires, uh, then the guilty person face, faces the dilemma. So in the civil law, uh, there is this concept of a reasonable time limit or time period. So such a, uh, a circumstance should be introduced in the criminal practice that w could be uh, they could be developed and uh, considering the specific features i think uh, these it's hard to uh, it doesn't make sense to talk about specific time limit the matter is this question i asked for a reason because you suggest to add part two of the crime content and uh, as prolonged uh, keeping the victim in captivity uh, but then you say as one day so what uh, how shall we use the how are you going to use the comment so the, the you see already you already included no more than 24 hours and uh, well the punishment is already ser seriously aggravated Thank you for this question. My uh, study has shown that the no, uh, this note is applied uh, not only uh, when a crime uh, classified by 
Article 1, uh, uh, Part 1 of Article 126 takes place. Even when the crime uh, covered by uh, Part 3 of Article 126, uh, the, perso the uh, person can be released from criminal responsibility. Uh, let's imagine a victim uh, got sick, pneumonia, he was released voluntarily, and then he died of, his, of this illness. So it seems to me that uh, introducing this qualifying object uh, will be applied uh, to persons who are under Article 126. And if this, uh, the question of uh, making somebody exempt from prosecution, such qualifying circumstance will not uh, be in the way of applying uh, notes to the article. I see, and one more technical question, but for us, for lawyers, you know that technical questions, sometimes uh, they, uh, their role is really significant. In the text uh, that I know quite well, and in the list of references, uh, numbers 50, 251, 253, you mentioned, let me read, Mankov, Russian legislation of 10th, 20th centuries, volume one, legislation of Mankov, Moscow, uh, 1985. Is this a work of Mankov or what is it? I can, uh, may I take a look? Uh, number 250 and and below. No, of course, I don't insist that Mankov wrote as the author of Russian legislation. So we would need a ti he would need a time machine. Of course not. So maybe uh, this is uh, in uh, maybe uh, that's uh, imp if improper formatting. We're dealing with improper formatting here, but uh, so there are over 300. I have over 300 sources. So Mankov is the scientific editor of this publication. Sergey Fyodorovich, I beg your pardon. We have to call a technical break again, according to our rules. Let me call technical break two.
Products. Let's finish uh, the technical break number two. And under the procedure, questions to do council members have more questions to the applicant's report? See, there are no questions. Let us continue then. Now, according to our procedure, now uh, we will give the floor to the council members. Uh, as I would like to make one comment, since all the reviews have been published at the university website, I suggest that you focus on the key points, questions and comments, if the council members have no objections. No, we don't. Uh, no objections to this suggestion. Thank you. Let me give the floor to Doctor of Law, Professor Bavsun Maxim Viktorovich. And one more thing, a technical thing. Yeah. Eugenia Vladimirovna, would you like to answer all the comments individually or after all the council members speak? Thank you, Vasily Vladimirovich. Would uh, be better for me to answer all the questions in the end because some questions are similar. Thank you. I accept your decision. Dear chairman, dear council members, dear colleagues, let me first of all uh, thank you for inviting, uh, for taking part in today's session. And uh, I'd like to say a couple of words. The vision I have after reading this. Uh, the thesis submitted for defense. Certainly, relevance uh, of the uh, topic it was obvious to me, since there's a number of rhetorical questions to which uh, the, uh, there has never been a question before. And one such question has already been mentioned by Sergei Fyodorovich. What happens uh, is uh, there, was a, there was a question. So these questions have always exist, existed, they still exist, and probably will exist in the future. And speaking, and uh, maybe uh, if we considering this topic, I'd like to say that our foreign colleagues and Eugenia Vladimirovna mentioned that she analyzed 26 experience, uh, legislation in 26 countries. They often see I have a look on these issues differently in principle and the issues of rhetorical nature because the answers have never been obtained. And uh, they, everywhere, lots of attention is given to, this, uh, to these issues. So the relevance of this research is beyond any doubt. Uh, I would like to say that the thesis has the necessary empirical uh, basis uh, on the, uh, which enables the author to make their conclusions. Uh, she has presented reliability of results is also confirmed uh, by publications uh, submitted to the, the station council, which are available online, which uh, signal comprehensive nature of the study in question that we are discussing today. I'd like to say that uh, scientific novelty of the thesis, I, what I saw for myself lies in developing the idea of, let me say, a novel approach to uh, legal regulation of some uh, challenging issues. And uh, for accord in accordance with this, uh, to qualification of uh, uh, crimes uh, covered by Article 126, but as any uh, thesis, this work also has some paradoxes of its own or of internal nature, let me put it that way, which should be mentioned in today's discussion. First of all, for example, uh, in today's speech, the speaker and in her thesis also, she says that several times uh, is a categorical uh, statement uh, on uh, the Article 126 uh, does not comply with the constitutional principle of, uh, of formal definiteness. Uh, so Article 126 
one, uh, the content of 126 is impossible from the point of legal legislation here. I'm trying to uh, align with this with scientific novelty. Uh, such strong statement uh, somehow scared me, and uh, because, in my opinion, if we talk about the need to uh, have a wider, get a wider vision of uh, kidnapping as the law of criminal, as a norm of criminal law, it seems, appears to me this is not exactly uh, true, because the task of all simple dispositions is that they don't have enough qualities and as we add qualities immediately uh, we start getting questions uh, connected with their interpretation so as it seems to me the work has some maybe not fundamental but some inner contradiction of its own because when we try to include say, the qualities immediately there's a need to interpret them and and of, of out of that uh, we get a paradox which the, to which there is no solution. There has no solution anywhere in the world. And the attempt of the applicant uh, is certainly uh, worth mentioning. She's trying to achieve a s uh, simple disposition, but because she identifies new quali qualities, uh, she runs into the need to interpret these new qualities. And uh, for, for, it seems to me, and I mentioned only two comments, uh, which s seem appear uh, relevant to me, because indeed, uh, this uh, well, it seems to me that, for example, for me, it's hard to agree with the author's suggestion uh, where it's necessary to qualify circumstances present the uh, social danger of a person alone with. Uh, those provided uh, law, law and captivity. Here I agree very much with my colleagues because here we run into several. So what is uh, a loan period? Uh, several comments are the same and uh, same uh, comments are made, were made by several members of the decision council. Uh, prolonged captivity uh, an assessment of this period is uh, so, like, so how long is long? Is it uh, two hours, three hours, one week, or one day? Uh, so here, uh, in the uh, course of this defense, I'd like Eugenia Vladimirna maybe uh, to rely on uh, international experience where colleagues from foreign countries, uh, including those from foreign uh, countries, have uh, differentiated. And this differentiated is fairly formal and clear. You may like or dislike it. It may be uh, correct, right, or wrong, but such differentiation is there. And when differentiation of responsibility uh, up to certain period, we get one type of responsibility and, and so on. So approaches are different, but the very term uh, for considerable period, uh, I didn't like. And uh, I got many questions because of this term. So this is a rhetorical question to which uh, many researchers tried to answer, and the answer to which, unfortunately, we have not found, has, has not been found, and, and neither on the lawmaking nor on the normative level. Another contradictory point, uh, in my opinion, is uh, if not factual, but maybe on the level of, so we just approached, the, we just reached we're talking about a different issue that has not been resolved or solved. No, let me let me let, let me put different. We we have solved it for sure. The uh, Supreme Court and existing practice. I'm talking about close relatives and the so-called uh, maybe that's a wrong term uh, uh, sharing or uh, sh uh, uh, where parents and grandparents uh, cannot agree among themselves. Uh, so and they start. Uh, so dividing of, uh, children, uh, up children uh, against uh, this court decisions, and uh, here as a very strong position of the author, in my opinion, honestly speaking, uh, I uh, didn't like it uh, when as I, and uh, while writing this today's review and this approach used by the author that here is necessary is liable for uh, criminal responsibilities, is kidnapping, criminal law should be applied. 
I personally, once again, because this is my personal opinion and it could be criticized as well, and uh, it's not necessarily right. So I cannot, uh, so it seems to me that life uh, is very complex. And in this complexity, making a, a one definite statement is sometimes difficult and uh, use the most uh, this criminal responsibility uh, instrument, uh, of course, in my opinion, is not uh, the right thing to do, especially if we consider the fact that very often uh, in a case of illegal at first glance and uh, actually illegal decision made by one of the parents, uh, the child maybe uh, is better off. So maybe his living conditions are, are better. But these are the two points and to which I would like I wanted to draw your attention and uh, so I would like to uh, hear uh, some uh, get some explanation from the degree applicant uh, well with, uh, in the uh, as she answers the questions that she's going to uh, provide when answering the questions uh, asked by other members of the council at the same time I have to say that these critical remarks are of course uh, mostly result from complexity of the task set by the applicant and may not affect fundamentally on the conclusions. I have to, uh, but uh, I think the thesis by Ivanova, Eugenia Vladimirna, complies with the requirements uh, set by the order for the 1st of September 2016, number 6821 slash 1, on awarding academic degrees at St. Petersburg State University. And the degree applicant, Ivanova, Eugenia Vladimirna, deserves of being awarded. The, the design degree uh, academic specialty as called here uh, 12008 criminal law and criminology uh, criminal enforcement act article 9 and 11 of the above mentioned order has not been violated by the author uh, thank you dear colleagues thank you uh, thank you maxim viktorovich thank you now let me give let us give the floor to doctor of law professor Professor of the Department of Criminal Law of uh, Russian State Pedagogical University, Neil Tahos and Milukov, Sir Sergei Fyodorovich. Uh, some preliminary remarks I'd like to make, dear colleagues. First of all, I am very grateful uh, for getting invaluable and very interesting experience of working in a dissertation council, though, of course, I knew a lot beforehand, but uh, I attended many times as a viewer, and I presented my own thesis, I reviewed. Then I became a council member uh, on Litini, uh, where, with my academic uh, advisor, we worked for uh, two years for a long time. So I, it all seemed to be very clear. Uh, this uh, a reviewer uh, and council members have to uh, listen to other uh, parties, but uh, here, when I was uh, asked to write a review, I found that, of course, upon having read the text of your thesis, I made an opinion that you deserve this degree of candidate of law. Thank God, the uh, what has happened so far. Uh, does not uh, uh, give me any reasons to change my mind, and I. Uh, but so there's only hypothetical situation that so I will certainly tell my colleagues who work in ordinary dissertation councils, and so we will uh, make our own uh, opinion. So as I have said already, having uh, listened to analysis of your work uh, provided by Professor Bafsun just now. Uh, I also think that this is a solid piece of uh, writing, uh, significant and important. But uh, since my review was very brief and I mostly focused my attention on the good points, uh, uh, now I'd like to start a small discussion uh, uh, over issues, some of which have already been mentioned. And you gave a preliminary answer, but still, once again, uh, the this uh, duration of being in captivity I understand your position of course is bad when the kidnapped 
person is spends one day in a cold basement. Uh, and well, this is terrible. That's a terrible situation. But what about cases? Uh, the maybe you remember that uh, Skopinski. Kopinski maniac, uh, where girls spend years in captivity. So your suggestion, in my opinion, does not reach its uh, original goal in this respect, because when if we follow this logic, maybe uh, we should talk about uh, super long duration. Or And uh, I know that such experience exists uh, in our country, where Kidnapped persons spend decades in captivity. Mostly, it's mostly true about females, but also sometimes can be true about men. And uh, you or he, perhaps he was he or she was kidnapped, and his entire life, his entire life, uh, is over. Of course, that should significantly affect his responsibility, the degree of his responsibility. But you uh, see him as uh, such a uh, villain, as, as, uh, as a, uh, with those who, uh, where a person was held in captivity for several hours or maybe for a day. So there's still to, uh, uh, in, uh, something to consider here. And another point that I would like, where I would like you, you know, to hear your explanation. I support you uh, in a sense that it is necessary to introduce a new article, uh, maybe uh, a comment to Article 126, perhaps, where kidnapping, where a child is kidnapped by a relative, uh, someone genetic or natural uh, or close, a close relative. But the sanction that you are suggesting, uh, considering the category of such persons, uh, the people, I'm not talking about so they are elderly people, and maybe they don't deserve such sanctions, uh, such as forced labor as a, a colony. In fact, maybe uh, maybe we should think about such punishment that was uh, removed from our system a long time ago. I mean, uh, exile or something to be in exile. So these people uh, who uh, who whose staying in vicinity uh, arouse uh, suspicion that he may uh, repeat the same actions. Maybe exile could be used as the main form of punishment uh, or maybe as a supplementary uh, norm form of punishment that would save uh, tools such as imprisonment and on the other hand provide an opportunity by enforcement by punishment uh, to prolong the punitive so exile that's a serious form of punishment uh, in order to prevent a repetition or other uh, attempts so that would be a form of double prevention if we use this exile as a form of prevention maybe in the next attempt uh, they murder the child so this sometimes happen or do considerable harm or do considerable harm to the parents with uh, whom the child stay, stays uh, otherwise I repeat I confirm my opinion I, as I said I think the work complies with the requirements set by by the order set by the order on uh, in 2016 on the order of awarding academic degrees at St. Petersburg University. And you, Ivanova, Eugenia Vladimirovna, deserve being awarded the degree of candidate of legal sciences uh, in the still existing specialty. I know we know that soon it would be changed. 12008, criminal law and criminology, criminal enforcement law. Uh, I also mentioned and I confirm that Articles 9 and 11 of the above mentioned order has not been violated. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Sergei Fyodorovich. 
Now, I'd like to give the floor to Doctor of Law, Professor, Professor of the Department of Legal Law of uh, Prosecutors University of Russian Federation, Nikolai Ivanovich Pikurov. Uh, welcome, Nikolai Ivanovich. The floor is yours. Uh, good afternoon, dear colleagues. Dear Vasily Vladimirovich, dear, dear Sergei Fed, Maxim Viktorovich, uh, dear Sergei Fyodorovich, and Eugenia Vladimirovna. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to take part in this scientific activity where it's possible uh, to discuss in detail uh, a, a, paper, a scientific work of Eugenia Vladimirovna. As for the paper itself, uh, honestly, I have uh, I had some doubts uh, when I took up reading this thesis, but on the other hand, I was interested in what else could the author write on this subject, which has been discussed a lot. Uh, the crime content was uh, described by the working, uh, discussed by the working group, the Congress uh, of this the resolution. So it seemed to me that uh, everything has been studied. But when I started reading this work, I was pleasantly surprised, first of all, by the fact that how careful, the careful attitude uh, to the uh, uh, study of materials, practice. Uh, the author demonstrated uh, court decisions over 1,000 and such scientific accuracy really impressed me. The, uh, and so she used so much. So this like 1,200 1, court decisions or cases. But here, in this case, such accuracy is very interesting and characterizes the applicant as a conscientious researcher. Accuracy, uh, good logic, logical transitions from one provision, the attempt to identify, a, to find a solution to the task which, in my uh, opinion, cannot be solved. This attempt uh, is uh, very well argumented, uh, contains references to court practice. The uh, author takes a general look at the nature of this crime, uh, philosophical uh, reaches the philosophical level. Why it cannot be resolved? Because the lawmakers forgot the uh, or, or let the uh, law users deal with these issues. So, uh, so this is the most classical case of simple uh, disposition, a simple content which is close to dispositions that we should just accept. Uh, as stating a norm. So this principle of definiteness certainly is under question. It's very questionable here. Of course, uh, for a long time, practice uh, very, very clearly, very clearly cemented this concept of kin kidnapping on the basis of a famous resolution of this well-known case of Supreme Court, court in year 2001, which was 20 years ago. And as you must have noticed, that uh, on that to that decision, to that resolution, uh, judges are still referring, at least uh, I studied uh, the, the Moscow City Court. So they refer to this resolution, what kidnapping is. So is, it seems to be uh, so, is something uh, relevant, something clear. So the current uh, resolution of the plenum of the uh, of the Supreme Court does not co has not copied the uh, e the current uh, the set practice to this definition. And here we are getting new questions. And in my opinion, the applicant uh, has found very interesting solutions to some uh, difficult questions, including those, the use of 
legal materials from other uh, fields of law in order to make this norm more definite. The most interesting for me in this, uh, adva this advantage, uh, the, uh, using, uh, using uh, for, for analysis of legal material, using material from other spheres of law uh, worked, in my opinion, against the author because in this case, in this case, uh, immediately uh, one starts wondering in, her re in my review, I, uh, I provided, I uh, asked some questions. Let me repeat the, my principal question. It's uh, on kidnapping a child, kidnapping a child. So one of the attempts to resolve this problem is here the content of kidnapping a child is, uh, but is not very consistent. Uh, identifying content, uh, but only for parents uh, to as to the, uh, I, but also the. Uh, so we uh, is it to assess body of the crime, uh, the legal right to this child, uh, the. Uh, of the person uh, who kidnapped, if uh, if uh, he ha still has parental rights or not. Uh, so we uh, has the right for this uh, property or not. Uh, and uh, I have, uh, I think Maxim Viktorovich probably perhaps asked, what happens if a, a parent kidnaps his own child so Eugenia Vladimirovna, uh, the subjective side, what do you think where a, a father, I'm a man, or okay, or okay, a mother, so, or a mother who thinks was deprived of parental ri uh, rights illegally. This happens. There are cases like that. We know of court decisions based on uh, false, falsified claims. Uh, so this woman, uh, so her, uh, so she, so she should be aware of the fact that this is a socially dangerous. Uh, of course, uh, so she, uh, she, she collects her own child. So the subjective component here is really. So the uh, impact of legal status on qualification based is it uh, grounded or or should we look at actual relations or s substitute mother but the main question is not this it the main question is uh, is the, this is a crime against freedom what's what's the degree of freedom of a, uh, of a child so if we look at a very young child uh, one year old two year old you uh, address this with the uh, by transfer of this feature uh, of um, the right to free actions to parents and guardians but the freedom of these parents or are we talking about the freedom of the child uh, in my personal opinion these are very these are very different actions by nature kidnapping a child not only in Russia but in today's world so we are uh, dealing with uh, cases uh, we have some cases where uh, the crime uh, occurs outside Russia so for uh, whatever purposes and the purpose and the children are being kidnapped for terrible uh, reasons or purposes this is a totally different crime, uh, well, not against freedom. Uh, I don't want to give my own definition, so I have only one question. Still have, uh, like, what are uh, the main reasons uh, for what what uh, should be the main uh, foundations for a crime against freedom? And 
uh, additional uh, reasoning. I'd like to hear the legal status of the uh, kidnapper uh, impacts, has an impact on qualification of the crime. So what is this impact? These are my questions. But in general, this is a, this is a very interesting work. Uh, the author uh, proves her, uh, the material the collected by the author. The material can uh, certainly be used by the Supreme Court uh, and probably by the Constitutional Court to resolve these issues finally. Uh, more. Uh, uh, so the uh, uh, definiteness of uh, the uh, author introduced into scientific circulation the results of independent study, which uh, so in general, so the I don't so the conclusion is that the work complies with the requirements. Uh, applied to scientific papers 12008 uh, criminal law and criminology uh, criminal enforcement uh, law and general limit deserves to be awarded the degree of candidate of science uh, of law legal sciences thank you thank you dear nikola ivanovich now the floor is given to doctor of law Associate Professor, Head of Department of Criminal Law and uh, against Tajik National University, Anwar Islam Safrazada. Welcome. Uh, dear Vladimir Vasilievich, dear colleagues, first of all, I'd like to express my gratitude for inviting me to take part in this dissertation council for defense of thesis by uh, Ivanova Eugenia Vladimirovna uh, submitted for the degree of candidate of legal sciences. Dear Vasily Vladimirovich, as for relevance of the th thesis, I may say that personal freedom along with life and health are values. A person can uh, or can uh, exercise other rights, but as the author demonstrates, to ensure the legal protection of individual freedom and the body of crime of kidnapping leads to many problems, which should be addressed. Uh, considering uh, practice, theory and practice. And uh, uh, there is no doubt, of course, uh, there is no doubt about the relevance. And the colleagues uh, mentioned some points which, so the thesis, uh, so I will uh, briefly give uh, my critical remarks, uh, which I included in the in my review the thesis is written on a, a level an adequate level and complies with the requirements applied to such works but at the same time as was said uh, the thesis Eugenia Vladimirna as other research pieces of research uh, has some points for discussion for example the uh, provisions submitted for defense. So the, uh, some subjects uh, have no opportunity to exercise their right, including minor uh, and underage children who exercise this uh, right through their parents and other legal representatives. But here, the author should mention uh, persons in prison who don't have physical freedom. So what is the author's opinion on this? Uh, I would like, so does this uh, category of subjects uh, is covered by her concept of subjects 
uh, deprived of the opportunity to exercise the second point for discussion is provision number six, uh, where the author indicates that applying this nomen to, the, uh, uh, note to Article 126 of the Criminal Code um, affects the right of the victim uh, because uh, the regardless of uh, harm the, uh, inflicted upon the victim. So it's necessary that uh, exemption from criminal responsibility should only be possible when crime did not inflict serious harm and the victim was released within the reasonable period after kidnapping. In other cases, release should be seen as a, a circumstance, uh, but the harm in uh, Article 126 uh, says that, that uh, the body of the crime uh, is a mitigating factor and, should, uh, and then and is not clear what time period is seen as a reasonable period. So that's why uh, this uh, provision uh, calls for uh, additional arguments. Next uh, point for discussion, in our opinion, is the name of Article 2 of Paragraph 1 of the second chapter subject and subjective um, uh, features of the uh, of kidnapping a hu uh, uh, an individual. Here, I think uh, it's not uh, subjective. Features do not result from the title of the paragraph. Moreover, at the same object of a crime is one of the of the body of a crime. So, in this article, should say the subject and subjective uh, features of kidnapping have. So, so the should explain this point where the point for discussion is also we come also across in paragraph 2 of article 1 of the of the of the thesis so the next question is in our opinion uh, is the uh, qualifying feature of kidnapping as with involving violence uh, dangerous for health or life and the use of such violence. Uh, part two of article 126 of the criminal code of Russia, where applying to the victim uh, and the, uh, for the period is not included in the body of uh, part two and the following example, uh, loan uh, stay in prolonged stay in captivity and violence dangerous for the life of the victim. Uh, violence, according to the, uh, not because of kidnapping, uh, which is an illegal activity, but also to uh, stop the victim from uh, freeing himself. But according to article of the decision of the plenum of Supreme Court of Russian Federation on legal practice on kidnapping and human trafficking. Kidnapping is Ill unlawful uh, capture, transfer, and uh, keeping in captivity, imprisonment, and uh, other motives have, and as a, resu as a result of this uh, further captivity also, also is covered by Article 126 and use of violence is also subject to this article. So it's necessary for the author to provide convincing arguments to provide. And uh, also, I have one question in the course of this discussion. So maybe Eugenia Vladimirovna studied not only criminal and legislation of Russia, but of, uh, she has also analyzed criminal law and uh, of Kyrgyz Republic 
Uh, there's an article of kidnapping persons with the aim of further marriage. And how, Eugenia Vladimirovna, what do you think? Can maybe there is a prospect in the future uh, to classify this act uh, in the Russian Federation considering uh, migration processes that uh, occur not only but also in the Russian Federation but and as for the thesis a thesis by Ivanova General on the theme kidnapping qualification or responsibility compliance to the main requirements set by the order of the 1st of September 2016 uh, in the degree applicant, Ivanova Eugenia Vladimirovna deserves being awarded the degree of candidate of legal sciences, specialty 12008, legal, uh, uh, criminal law and criminology. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Anwar Islam. And let me, the uh, council members, let me also talk about the thesis we are discussing today uh, by uh, uh, Ivanova Eugenia Vladimna, Kidnapping Qualification Responsibility. My task is easier because a lot has been said already and many reviews by uh, leading experts in this field, so I will allow myself not to keep your attention. Uh, with detailed analysis of this work, the relevance and the novelty are obvious, and the theme certainly deserves attention. Though, of course, uh, uh, several studies have been conducted in this field, but the author managed to make her own contribution uh, in scientific concept of this issue, and this is certainly the achievement, but as was said by Nikolai Ivanovich earlier, her conclusions uh, to uh, big to, to a great degree are based on the study of existing court practice, uh, which is certainly the advantage of this work and an achievement of the author. It appears to me that scientific novelty of the thesis of Eugenia Vladimirovna is shown not only in the way she sets the task, but also in the way she uh, address, she solves several qualification tasks. Uh, she successfully continues the tradition of the de criminal law department where exactly uh, practice, uh, orientation on practice uh, gets special attention and maybe there it's there's a certain brand of our graduates. And of course, this adds, uh, this is a feature of this work, uh, distinct, distinctive feature. Many suggestions uh, made by the author uh, are interesting and certainly deserve support. For example, I liked the idea in principle to increase the list the, of mitigating and aggravating circumstances in case of kidnapping. And uh, what's especially, especially important here is her suggestion to de delineate crimes against personal freedom uh, based on analysis of a considerable amount of court practices. The work itself is logical. Uh, and uh, which allows the author to achieve their desired goals. In uh, general, the study of this work uh, show them shows the author is an independent researcher and her conclusions are well justified, but certainly as any piece of research, it has some drawbacks, which may be, could be the reason for critical remarks. But of course, such I also have such remarks, which I 
included in my review. Maybe I did not uh, focus on some fundamental issues because this work is written in a certain context, but at the same time, I uh, have to say as a wish to the author, uh, recommend the author to pay attention to conclusions. She made uh, several provisions submitted for defense. It, I, th I think that the work itself is more interesting and the uh, text itself is more interesting uh, uh, then the main uh, provisions, I'm not saying that all of them are bad uh, or have certain drawbacks, but there are some drawbacks, certainly. Uh, namely, I'm talking about uh, the study of foreign experience. Here, uh, we don't have to look or to copy somebody else's practice, though of course, there are there is experience we could use also in this case, but uh, most of all, I paid attention that uh, among conc uh, the conclusions, uh, there are some unclear uh, uh, unclear recommendations uh, on differentiation of uh, crime bodies. So uh, such recommendation is uh, hardly applicable because there are obviously there are situations where these are not used, such uh, differentiation criteria. And of course, in my review, I uh, discussed this in more detail, but now I'd like to get back to what already became a subject theme of our discussion is the issue of that's the issue of uh, what uh, uh, the issue that drew most attention uh, of all the reviews. This is the suggestion uh, to apply Article 126: kidnapping a child committed uh, by a person deprived of parental rights or other close relative of a child. Here, the author, Nikolai Ivanovich, uh, provided very good arguments, and I absolutely agree with almost all of them. But what I wanted to add is I had also had doubts there about this suggestion, uh, about introduction of this norm, because it seems to me that this is something unnatural. Uh, the desire of a person of a parent uh, to, of course, uh, there are different types of parents and uh, relations can be different, but in most cases in uh, our reality, in our society, in our tradition, uh, most uh, of, of most nations on earth, it's usual that parents learn to be with their children and children learn to be with their parents. and punishing them for this, for this natural learning, it uh, seems to me maybe it's difficult to understand, or there is a certain psychological barrier, and maybe Eugenia Vladimirovna will uh, provide uh, additional ideas, but of course here I absolutely agree, there's no object of claimed personal freedom. Maybe this uh, this is a crime about existing legal order, not following the, observing the court decisions or whatever, but not against, but maybe not about, uh, not against the personal freedom of this, of the child. And also any work has uh, prospects and could be uh, the endless room for improvement, but uh, I'd like to state that these drawbacks uh, we have already discussed today and to which I also paid attention, they have no significant impact on the uh, on in-depth analysis and uh, high evaluation of the scientific work submitted for defense 
uh, its independence and originality. And I'd like to conclude the thesis by Ivanova Eugenia Vladimirovna on the theme key nothing, qualification, responsibility, compliance with the main requirements set by the order, the 1st of September, uh, 1st of uh, August, September 2016, on the order of awarding academic degrees at St. Petersburg University, and the degree applicant deserves being awarded the degree uh, academic specialty 12008. Dear colleagues, I also state that articles 9 and 11 have not been violated by the author. Also, I wanted to inform you that. No, we received no external reviews, and uh, so I, uh, I would like to give the floor to the applicant and uh, invite her to answer the questions asked by the council members. Dear council members, I thank you for your questions. Many of the questions uh, allowed me to take a different uh, look. Uh, and as I read, uh, some topics were mostly interesting, so I shall give you a comprehensive answer. So, and uh, so I will start with maybe less important questions, uh, which uh, started most discussion. First of all, thank you. Uh, let's thank uh, Slow Lee for uh, paying attention to the title of two paragraphs of my work, the object and objective characteristics of kidnapping and subject and subject characteristics of kidnapping. I agree. A more appropriate title for these paragraphs would be the object and other objective features of kidnapping and the subject and other subjective features of kidnapping. Such titles would undoubtedly be more appropriate given that the object and subject are not excluded from the objective characteristics of a, a crime and accordingly, and they are part of them. And I did not set myself the task to exclude the object. Second question that I would like to answer, also connected with the content of the, is the subject of, of the body, of the subject of the crime, though the vast majority of sources devoted to Article 136 of the Criminal Code in relation to the subject of the crime the subject doesn't have the signs of special. These circumstances, I point out in my work, when differentiating uh, well, the corpus delicti of Article 126, uh, uh, Articles 285 and 236, the issue of uh, is uh, the subject of crime is of interest. The subject of crime, human, has some specific features according to our part one of Article 26 of the Criminal Code. Uh, the age of 16, uh, but uh, and there's a number of crimes established from the age of 14, in particular for crimes stipulated by Article 106 of the Criminal Court for kidnapping. So it sometimes, uh, if such peculiarity, such age peculiarity of the subject, a special feature of a subject, to this answer mostly that saying that such. Of Article 126 is committed by a special subject because of age peculiarities, and this conclusion follows from the from the interpretation of provisions of Article 19 of Part 2 of Article 20 of the Criminal Code, provision of Chapter 14 of the Criminal Establishing Specific Features of Criminal Liability and Punishing of Minors for Institution of Complicity, establishing the rules of qualified as a crime special subject. And usually, reduction of the general age of criminal responsibility for crimes provided by Article 136 is based on the assumption that the person who have reached the age of 14 is able to realize the public danger of kidnapping. And in determining the age of criminal responsibility, the doctrine is guided by the position that by certain age, a person reaches an appropriate level of social maturity, which allows him to understand the essence of criminal prohibitions. And though there's no direct indication, it, assume, it is assumed at the same time the question of age of a subject is closely connected with the uh, uh, formal the, 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 the spin, uh, principle. The study conducted Hutsev, by Hutsev uh, uh, interviewing uh, minors aged 14 to 16 who are subjects of responsibility for kidnapping. Such 
uh, such individuals uh, cannot give definite answers about kidnapping. Some uh, say this is a symbol to imprisonment. Uh, some say they're asking for a ransom or asking for money. Others say that uh, is keeping in captivity and others just call this act a crime. And this means that minors, they are not only aware of what kidnapping actually is, uh, but of uh, related bodies such as uh, unlawful captivity, so the body of crime they cannot they uh, kidnapping, and these are in different categories of severity and public danger. So here we may conclude that uh, minors are not fully aware of social danger, and such awareness uh, seems necessary to me. And the uh, legal assessment is also based on the guilt of crime and his subjective uh, image of what he has done. So a person is lawful uh, of the uh, could uh, criminal only with the uh, circumstances. So that is that the subject of a crime is is uh, interesting, and uh, I personally relate is. According to Article 26 of formal uh, distinctness, because simple disposition and lack of understanding of what kidnapping by citizens who uh, should comply with the requirements, there's a question of how, if there is the simple disposition is uh, grounded. The third question uh, is the uh, the. Um, the special uh, verses of uh, for marriage. This question has already I already un had to answer this question. And in Russian legislation, this uh, is being discussed. Uh, the uh, lawmaking initiatives from some regions of Russia, because in the south of Russia, this issue is quite relevant. Why is that? Often women. Uh, it is subject to such kidnapping is then released and the kidnapper uh, article 126 but on the one hand the uh, person is exempt from criminal responsibility uh, but her reputation is seriously affected if she is not compensated and in some regions of Russia uh, the female is considered disgraced and as it seem, appears to me, the privileged body in the, rush, uh, in the criminal code, we don't need, because as part one of Article 126, I don't see the difference between protection of physical freedom and physical freedom of men. I don't see if there is a need to differentiate. I don't agree with the, that such body should be introduced as a privileged uh, crime body. I don't think that uh, social danger of such actions is lower than uh, uh, social danger of actions included in part one of Article 126. The next question that I would like to answer is about qualification of uh, violence, uh, the use of violence when kidnapping. And uh, this uh, violence applied to a kidnapped person should be qualified as an independent crime. And in this case, uh, there is the question of this should, this a formal uh, body. The like, uh, violence can be applied uh, before uh, the uh, during kidnapping and uh, before actual release uh, to. Uh, keep the victim in captivity and to achieve other uh, results uh, such as uh, are those in, uh, mentioned by Article 126 says uh, violence uh, such as keeping in captivity or property, for example, asking for ransom. Uh, the existing court practice uses violence, such violence, not as an in, in, independent crime, as a circumstance and a cumulative I like the uh, this is where such violence occurs during uh, kidnapping, 
And if we look at, uh, for example, uh, uh, sexual freedom of individual, we may see that according to the plenum, it should be seen as independent crime, uh, uh, harm to health after uh, raping a woman. But such threat of uh, or serious harm to health is connected with the uh, raping. But the plenum uh, recommends to divide a completed crime uh, or the uh, victim and of her health. So kidnapping a person is, 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 is shall be are different. And at the same, what uh, violence uh, is, um, is, is a special, uh, in my opinion, depend on the period of a criminal, of uh, actual, not of factual end of the crime. It seems to me that the finished crime cannot cov cover what happened after uh, the, the end of this crime. So we have no question when we talk about uh, not uh, uh, talk about not about lasting crimes, but uh, uh, theft, for example. So I don't think there is a major difference depending on how the body of the crime is constructed and how we qualify the violence is connected with this crime. Next question. The next question is about foreign legislation. Indeed, in my study, I the foreign legislation uh, no norm for. Uh, the disposition of which could be used by the, uh, but in the uh, should the study of foreign legislation for adoption of this uh, in, uh, or disposition was not the task of my work, though the possibility of finding disposition that most fully and uh, reflect uh, the uh, corpus delicti of kidnapping and uh, is, could be as a possible disposition of Article 126 of the Russian Fed corresponding of another disposition from foreign law. Though this crime enabled me to conclude that in vast majority of cases, uh, there's no ideal approach to corpus delicti. Uh, and I paid attention uh, as, as they discuss if uh, the need uh, more universal understanding of kidnapping, for example, as we already have in case of, is, which is available in case of human trafficking, for example. And next comment on differentiation of between and corpus delicti as uh, host, uh, keeping hostage, same, uh, uh, same features, same characteristics can also be in, uh, given hostage. And differentiation is uh, the difficult in practice and in reality. If we define these uh, two composition, it's, uh, it's necessary to the uh, corpus delictis and is included spe specific purpose is uh, not specified in case of kidnapping. But in practice, the goal may also be present when a person uh, commits kidnapping. For example, material demands are made condition for release of a kidnapped person. And in practice, it's difficult to distinguish between the primary and secondary uh, objects of a crime, as, as well as to determine which object is primary. And there may be situations in which uh, law enforcement circumvention is not related to the elements of crime. For example, uh, hostage taken as opposed to the uh, kidnapping. Of course, these circumstances can contribute to the correct resolution of a particular criminal case. But I doubt whether this can be used to distinguish between related corpus delicti from the point of view of the doctrine. Next question. To, that to which is provision three uh, submitted for defense. Is, uh, some, is cannot exercise its right for, for, for uh, personal freedom, such as minor children, uh, exercise through their parents and guardians. And at the same time, in the course of the study, uh, we concluded uh, that freedom has. So first of all, these are minor children. Secondly, we're talking about uh, the uh, inability to understand the consequences of their of their uh, and this also includes 
uh, persons in uh, prison, in prison, uh, in medical institutions or psychiatric institutions. Such persons cannot fully exercise their physical the right to physical freedom. Minor children are in provision as the most obvious, but not the only example of such individuals. Uh, so that's why I used uh, uh, the phrase in particular, meaning that I, I'm using this category of, uh, to illustrate. And using minors as an example is less obvious because their freedom uh, is uh, maybe less obvious, their right uh, to personal freedom. Now, I'd like to proceed to qualifying circumstances and uh, the use with this comment I'd like to proceed to. I think we should agree that uh, the suggestion of uh, qualifi uh, qualifying circumstances are uh, loan to, to in captivity and taking the kidnapped person. Of course, they are not absolutely new, uh, but uh, was impossible to um, forget these circumstances because it's closely connected to uh, comments to Article 100, uh, the duration of kidnapping uh, increases the social danger of the crime. As for qualifying circumstance as taking the kidnapped person outside the Russian Federation, is it uh, seemed impossible to me to uh, see this circumstance as, uh, for example, human trafficking. And that is why as Article as, uh, qualifying circumstances. As for qualifying circumstances, indicating at duration in captivity, in my thesis, I concluded it's necessary. This qualifying circumstance is needed when the victim spends more than 24 hours in captivity. I have not conducted a study myself after what period of time in captivity uh, victims are usually released. But analysis of scientific sources indicates that usually within the first 24 hours, the kidnappers decide what to do to the victim. The victim is either released or um, uh, uh, stays in captivity or murdered. After 24 hours, and kidnapping usually occurs with the person of uh, demanding material compensation or relatives the claims usually made within the first 24 hours. So that's why I uh, decided to use this duration as uh, such a, a period as 24 hours. And uh, as qualifying circumstance, I would like to um, uh, as for the comment, a uh, person rele voluntarily released can be relieved from uh, criminal responsibility when the crime has not uh, inflicted serious aim, serious damage, and the kidnapped person was released from captivity within a limited period. Otherwise, uh, uh, mitigating circumstances uh, when appointing uh, punishment. Uh, so as you can see, I link the possibility of release uh, not only with a limited reasonable period, but also with consequences and uh, uh, Skopinski maniac's case was mentioned because we cannot deny uh, that the victims suffered serious harm. And after, so if he released such girls, I would, uh, if, it's necess if, if it's reasonable to apply uh, and such use of this comment, uh, would seem unreasonable to me. It's necessary to look at the circumstances. Maybe sometimes uh, the circumstances as a, as a small base uh, is more harmful than spending a month uh, in uh, normal circumstance, living conditions. But if the living conditions are normal, that is why I would not link this comment only to duration, but I also link it to the actual harm sustained by the victim. If the such harm is observed, doesn't matter when the uh, so we don't. As for the uh, wording itself of the comment itself, uh, here I'd like to draw your attention to the following. Uh, the uh, the wording is as follows: the person released. 
person is released from criminal responsibility. There's no composition crime body, corpus delicti. And a person can be released from criminal responsibility for kidnapping only if the person has not committed another crime. So here we are come to the conclusion when uh, so any harm to health or well, literal is a person should not be exempt from responsibility under Article 126, and they should be uh, the actions should be classified such as uh, article against health or crime against health or property. In the doctrine and law application practice, uh, such strictly speaking, this is not exactly legal, and in reality means the change of norm uh, by interpretation. Because such interpretation, we are talking about literal interpretation, uh, does not uh, pursue interests of the victim. The person can be released from qualified kidnapping. So, for example, could be exempt from criminal responsibility, uh, so, such as minor or a pregnant woman, but a person released with, uh, from a responsibility in case weapon of use of weapons. Yes. And so literally, so the interpretation of the comment would application of violence uh, harmful for uh, would impossible to uh, in case of kidnapping because the corpus delicti of Article two, uh, Part One of uh, Part Two of Article One Hundred Twenty Six is necessary to need to perfect uh, the. So they do not interpret literally the situation where a person kidnaps another person and commits another crime in addition, not connected with kidnapping, and the person can, could be exempt from kidnapping, but is still re, would still be responsible for the other crime. And if a qualifying or a qualifying kidnapping, the person is not to be exempt. And uh, related uh, norms of the criminal law at the moment do not provide an opportunity to make a person exempt from responsibility for a crime against health. Thus, uh, no matter what the consequences are, so if the, the person is, is exempt from criminal responsibility in case he or she releases the, the victim. The harm uh, inflicted upon the victim is, uh, was, was in captivity for several hours or was in captivity for several years, it's obvious and releasing the uh, exam making the uh, criminal exempt from punishment doesn't look fully grounded to me does not appear grounded fully grounded as i, I said or, or i mentioned already a reasonable duration and maybe i will repeat myself that the criminal law should work as uh, a finely tuned mechanism uh, that should consider objective and subjective features of corpus delicti and disregard what is not related to corpus delicti and uh, I go here I'm going against my own logic so because I'm talking about the reasonable duration which uh, uh, but I explained why I'm doing this maybe in the future I will uh, uh, develop a better criteria and explain them better at the moment it seems to me uh, that it's hard to uh, define the period. Also, I wanted to agree with the idea that in most cases where kidnapping is should be classified has a sci uh, uh, little scientific value. This conclusion is made where qualification of the action was is a condition of the child or children. Thus, this provision, uh, I did not submit it for defense, but I submitted another defense when cases with uh, qualified crime, the object of which is social relations uh, that ensure physical freedom, is also the uh, main object of Article 126 should be classified as a, a combination of crimes, and such cases include crimes uh, provided for by Article 126. Why well, was provision was uh, because when analyzing uh, court practices, especially court practices, uh, ten-year-old court practices, the uh, corpus delicti of crimes of kidnapping and uh, seen as violence, uh, 
and the most uh, the worst case of unqualification of part two of article is a situation when a person was kidnapped and transferred and kept in captivity and subject to violence uh, to uh, get back the money alone and uh, so it was necessary to so on the basis of uh, existing of the uh, suffering object so the, is this a combination of crime or is, is this a different crime but not should be classified as other type of crime and but most questions that must of a privileged corpus delicti uh, for persons so kidnapping children to whom uh, the ch children is uh, related of course uh, certainly, uh, illegal removal of a child is, uh, is certainly uh, open to discussion, and there's a lot of discussion arise regarding the validity of such harsh response. Is uh, family when deciding whether or not there is public danger in such an act as an illegal removal of a child by a relative? The need to consider the act of transferring the removed child abroad as more socially dangerous. We may come across such suggestions. It seems that such an act is an as unlawful removal of a child who has no right to physical freedom of the child constitutes public danger. And here, uh, I would like to say that very often lawyers are, are human, and on the one hand, we are reasoning, we are act as children, we have families, but on the other hand, we talk, should talk about laws, so we should not combine these two things. I certainly do not deny that people uh, have uh, uh, close biological ties, but there's a question, should such circumstances uh, be considered, or such relations be considered? I think this act has a legal danger. I conducted a social a survey. I've spoken to many people, and the majority of people either said yes, it's necessary to introduce uh, criminal responsibility, or they said that uh, the circumstances should be considered. Also, should not define that close relations can be established outside families. Let's imagine a situation, for example, where uh, the mother is more responsible, how such uh, the actives should, uh, I think, no. Also, the analysis of norms of family legislation and, and constitutional law that persons who, there are persons who can exercise the physical free, uh, freedom of a child uh, indirectly and a violation of rights uh, ha has pub social danger. I'm not talking about criminal responsibility. Uh, that does not agree, and uh, that wouldn't make sense. But uh, keeping uh, taken hostage or, or a person deprived by, uh, and usually we see uh, some guilty behavior, and we may conclude that this person uh, may be dangerous to the child. Here we may conclude that legal practice is not uh, ideal, especially when depriving of parental rights. I have not analyzed it honestly, but I think that a person uh, can be, uh, can restore his uh, parental rights instead of such behavior. And in most family, in an average uh, family, uh, no one is deprived of parental rights for no reason. So when a person wants to reestablish or return uh, the, uh, but, uh, the physical, so this person should use uh, legal uh, methods for this. As for differentiation of criminal responsibility, depend, uh, of course, in my study, I analyzed uh, the uh, international norms, and this analysis shows that the return of a child from another state is often less problematic then the return of a child to the parent with whom the child has a place of residence if the act was committed exclusively within the Russian Federation. And it seems reasonable from this point to separate the two issues. First is the issue of a return of the child and the application of the Hague Convention and uh, or the wrongful removal of the child. So in my opinion, the citizenship of the child does not de increase or decrease the social danger of the committed act, just indicates that other mechanisms should be enacted.
and the question of subjective side uh, is a person for example a mother deprived of parental rights when the child is removed i think this issue is closely connected with the issue of purpose uh, no uh, lawmakers uh, kidnapping should have some specific purpose and the analysis of legal practice is a purpose is not connected usually immediately with a uh, uh, claim against uh, claims against the physical prison and in those cases the behavior of a person uh, pursue, pursues sexual or material or other purposes and that is why in this case it seems to me that uh, the basis of subjective side the person is aware as disposal of physical freedom of a child and uh, uh, the physical freedom of a child is fully aware that is claiming against this right is willing to act is act acts like this thank you for your attention i don't know if i managed to answer your, all your questions uh, thank you eugenia vladimirovna dear colleagues dear council members are you is everybody satisfied by eugenia vladimirovna's uh, answers i am i am I'm also satisfied. I don't have another uh, a study to. Uh, I will keep my opinion, but I don't. Eugenia Vladimirna uh, provided arguments and made reference. Thank you, Nikolai Ivanovich. Well, is anyone uh, present willing to talk? If there were, uh, have we received any questions uh, regarding the content of the thesis? Uh, and uh, uh, while this uh, session was broadcast, no, we have not. That's good. Let us give the floor to the academic advisor, Vladislav Fyodorovich Belkov, Doctor of Law, Professor. Welcome, Vladislav Fyodorovich. Dear council members, uh, is present and present online, dear chairman, with Eugenia, I met Eugenia Vladimirna when she was a student at St. Petersburg University in a master's program, criminal law. And already at that time, it was clear that she is capable of doing research, her answers. Uh, were always well argumented, very detailed, and not only me, but Professor Van Chinese Universities, Chai Lun, she took me aside and said, look at Eugenia, this girl answers questions very well. Uh, is when she graduated in 2015 for a year, Eugenia Vladimirovna, uh, decided not to apply. Oh, so you, uh, I, uh, so well, she, she could not get into our doctoral program, but after in 2016, she got enrolled in a doctoral program. And so, the, so it took her five years to write her thesis, so five years uh, is not that's not nothing uh, there is nothing special by the standards of St. Petersburg University maybe I will say something wrong that for the so five years is, is a long term for yes it is for the uh, but for St. Petersburg University it uh, very seldom takes uh, less than four years but I have to say that such delay happened because in parallel with working on her thesis, Eugenia Vladimirovna also gave birth to two wonderful children. The scientific advisor has the right to be partial, and I think the thesis is a success. And the question, the last question that she answered, I have to say I also disagree with uh, Eugenia's opinion and I 
said that at our at this meeting of our department, but here's what I came to realize. If I had to address this topic 20 years ago, I probably would give the same answer that Eugenie is giving today. Maybe this is the conflict between the, the conflict of generations, and this will pass in 20 years. But that's that's how I think. That's what I think. So thank you for your attention. Thank you, Vladislav Fyodorovich. Dear colleagues, uh, is anyone willing to speak? Uh, anyone uh, of the council members? No. Of the attendees? No. Well, uh, good. have we received any questions by email? No. Yes. Very well. Then, uh, so we stop uh, accepting questions and proceed to the next item, which is voting. Now, is uh, six past five Moscow time. Dear colleagues, we have the opportunity to take a break to discuss the results of defense and the sound shall be switched off. What do you think? Do we need this such a break? No, I don't think we do. Thank you. Thank you. If discuss, we don't need a break to discuss, and so let us vote. And the opinion of all the council members should be given individually and openly. Uh, let me check again that our colleagues, Nikola Ivanovich, I can hear, and and Varislom, can you hear us? Can you see us? Varislom, can you see? Can you hear us? Let's turn the microphone on. I want to make sure you can hear and see us, yes. Anwar Islam. Shall we call it technical break? Another technical break? Dear colleagues, we have to call technical break three until the connection with another council members is resumed. I call technical break number three. As you can hear, good. Dear colleagues, let us continue our session. The third technical break is over. The connection with all the council members has been established. I set the question of awarding to Ivanova General in the degree of candidate of law, scientific specialty 12000 criminal law and criminology, criminal enforcement law to the open individual vote. And let me remind you that a decision of the dissertation council on awarding a degree should be considered positive if over a half, but not less than three members of the decision council present at the session voted for it, uh, according to Article 23 of the order, all the uh, all the council members are were present. So let me ask each me council member individual. Council member Bobson Maximitris, your opinion? I am for awarding, I'm for awarding the degree to Ivanova Eugenia Vladimirovna. 
Thank you, Maxim Viktorovich. Uh, Milikovs Sergei Fyodorovich. I vote for awarding the degree candidate of law. Thank you. Nikolai Van Shpikorov. I vote for awarding the degree to Eugenia Vladimirovna. Council member Safarzada Anwar Islam, your opinion, please. I also vote for I am for awarding the degree to Eugenia Vladimir. Thank you. And me, as a chairman, Veklinka uh, Vasilovic, my opinion is I vote for awarding the degree of candidate of law. Thus, dear colleagues and guests, let me inform you that of five council members, five voted for, no one voted against, and no one abstained. The decision on awarding to Ivanova Eugenia Vladimirovna the uh, degree of candidate of law, specialty 120008, criminal law, criminology, criminal law enforcement, has been made. The closing, uh, the, we're going the floor, giving the floor to the applicant for closing remarks. I'd like to say uh, thank you, dear council members, for finding the time to read my thesis and to take part in this session. Thank you very much. And special thanks to Vladislav Fyodorovich, uh, who has worked for me for a long time. I think maybe that was quite hard, uh, considering how many times we had to rework the thesis. So the, when it was fully finished, and we had to edit because of the plenum of the Supreme Court, and Vladislav Fyodorovich had to read my thesis again. So I am very grateful to all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Dear colleagues, dear council members, dear attendees, do you have any questions uh, regarding the procedure of today's session? Please let me know. No, no, we don't. Uh, all went in, was in accordance with the regulations. Uh, we congratulate our applicant with successful defense and with being awarded the degree. A session of our dissertation uh, council is closed. I thank everybody for participation. Please stop broadcasting. Thank you.